Flat illustration is everywhere. Think of traffic signs. The pictures are clean, simple, not too much detail, and it's easy to tell what it is from a glance. Of course, when illustrating a storybook, drawing stick figures in a single color background will get you kicked from the project. I'm going to draw three scenes from The Little Match Girl that have different mood and focal points from each other. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the story. We'll talk about the main focus, choosing color themes, and how it all works in flat illustration style. Flat illustration is usually lineless. You can draw freely with any pen, brush, or just use the last tool and fill. You can also use figure tool to draw smooth outlines. Textured brushes like chalk, pastel, and stuff works great too if that's what you prefer. I'm using my favorite modified mapping pen and hard eraser plus gradient tool and tone scrapping airbrush for other effects. It's okay to shade the illustration with either cell, shading, or gradient, but remember that flat illustration should look flat. Draw the shading in a way that doesn't give the illustration much sense of depth. If you're using gradient, use it mindfully. We want the shapes to look sharp, too much gradient can muddy the colors. Because of its lineless nature, color is very important. You cannot cheat by using line art to separate items of similar colors. That's when contrast came in. May it be shape contrast or color contrast, our eyes are drawn to something that is unusual. And to look unusual, the main focus should be different from its surroundings. Color is our greatest weapon. When talking about colors, there are four kinds of contrast. Color versus grayscale, which is pretty much the same as saturated versus desaturated. Warm versus cool, and the most important of them all is the values or the brightness. I'll explain about values right after choosing the colors. Choosing the color theme was a nightmare for me. Knowing about color theory is one thing, but how do we choose the colors? My tip is to choose the color that will dominate most space in the illustration first and everything will fall into place. Let's pick the colors for the illustrations. The scenes happen at night, the surrounding will be in blue. Thus, blue will dominate and become our first color. In color theory, we have plenty of colors that will create with blue and plenty that though. This will help us eliminate a lot of probabilities. Warm colors are attention-grabbing and a good contrast for the cool blue. It's a good idea to have some illustration, particularly for our main character. This eliminates color harmonies that only have cool colors. Now that we have less, decide how much hue you want to use. For this illustration, 2 is too little and 4 is too much. Let's stick with 3. Only to left, I don't feel like using pink, so the winner is split complementary. Congratulations, we've got ourselves a color theme. I hope this tip can help you when you're stuck choosing colors for your art. I'm trying out colors and flashing out the characters and environment in this step because I'd hate to stumble when drawing the real thing. First, because this isn't a cheerful story, I avoid picking saturated colors. For lights through the window, we'll use washed out yellow to make it look kinda warm but lifeless. The snow is in light blue instead of white. I tend to avoid pure white and pure black in my colored illustrations. To draw the viewer's eyes to the girl, we're going to use warmer colors that are a bit more saturated and brighter while the passerby look washed out compared to her. I prefer purple for the shooting star, but it doesn't, it's not a part of the color theme, so I choose light saturated yellow compared to the windows, giving more life to it and a little glow. For the last picture where the girl and her grandma fly to heaven, I choose to bath them in warm light with gradient using the shooting star's colors. Take the girl's palette with higher saturation and brighter colors to match with the light. To see if the colors are working, check the values. Got layer property, expression color, gray. It will change your colored picture into grayscale. Value is how light or dark a hue can be. Flat illustration doesn't usually contain line art, so it's important for different shapes to have different values. For example, the colors of the girl's headscarf and the window have similar values. Let's use hue saturation luminosity and increase the brightness to make it lighter. Go to layer property, expression color, color and see the change. The changes you make in grayscale mode will be carried to color mode. Knit right? Not perfect, but okay for now. I'll adjust as I work on the illustrations. For the first picture, the poor girl is chasing someone on the street trying to sell her matches. I'll make it in top-down view to 
will show the narrow alley and to fit more information to the illustration. The second picture is the scene when the girl saw a shooting star and reminded of her kind grandma. The focal point is the shooting star, and we're going to put the camera behind the girl to tell the viewer that the girl is looking up there. The star and the girl are on the opposite sides to balance the illustration. If the girl is right under the star, that we empty space that makes the illustration looks like it's too heavy on one side. The lights on the buildings are all off to tell the viewers that even when the town goes to sleep, the girl is still out there in the cold. The last one is when she meets her grandmother in the afterlife. Since the illustration starts on the left, I put the girl and the grandma on the top right to go with the flow. The girl in the alley would be on the bottom left of the third illustration, so I'm going to flip the second illustration. Because the main focus is the dumb flying to heaven, make the girl on earth blends with the colors of the environment. Let's check the values of the three illustrations. Looks pretty much okay. After this, I'm going to take a break for 2-3 hours so I could spot mistakes when I'm back with fresh eyes. Now that I'm back, I notice some problems. The first illustration's main focus is the girl but I did her dirty. Let's add some shadow at the top and the bottom of the image, then some on the buildings. Much better. Second illustration, the sky looked too empty and why did I draw the building crooked? Let's add some lighter blue streaks to the sky and liquefy the building. For the third one, let's make the earth girl's head smaller and increase the contrast of the heaven ones including the warm light. One last test before we clean up the illustrations is the squint test. The purpose of this test is to determine if the focal point of the illustration is not being distracted by anything in the environment. The manual way to do it is to move away from the screen, 
Squint your eyes and look at the illustrations. I can't do that, so I choose to blur the illustrations with Gaussian Blur. As we can see, the first illustration doesn't quite pass the squint test. The light from the windows and the girl are battling for attention. The other two though passed with flying colors. I'll keep that in mind and adjust the window lights as I draw the final version. I'm going to clean up the lines. And adjust things like the colors. Add more snow. Add more effect to have unseen. Withdraw the windows and so on. By the way, it's a long and boring process. Nothing revolutionary, and my old laptop would explode recording the whole process, so I'll just give you the final result. Let's check the color values and do another screen test to make sure everything works out well. Illustration 1. Let's make the girl's dress darker. Okay, moving on to screen test. Illustration 1 barely passed the screen test. The red barely grabs more attention than the window lights, but I don't want to dim the light more than this. And we're done! I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.